Hello, let's talk about Hodgkin lymphoma. Not a lot that you can ask about Hodgkin in a test question. Mainly exam writers like to use Hodgkin lymphoma as a stepping stone to ask an Epstein-Barr virus question. So I will not be reviewing EBV. That's something that you should have in your back pocket right now. What you want to know about recognizing Hodgkin lymphoma so that you can answer the easy micro question is that you see some characteristic cells on histology. And of course, it's a lymphoma. So you cannot diagnose it unless you take a biopsy of the affected lymph node. And when you do, you are going to see binucleate owlide reed sternberg cells that are positive for CD15 and CD30. And if you understand that and you can pick the reed sternberg cell out of the crowd, then you can answer just about any question. You will get asked about Hodgkin lymphoma. So let's do some cases and then look at some histo. A 23-year-old man presents with malaise, night sweats, weight loss, and intermittent fever, dating from a flu-like illness three months previously. So when you see fever, night sweats, and weight loss, there are two big, big diagnoses that should jump to the forefront of your brain, one being tuberculosis, the other being cancer. When you do a physical exam of this patient, you see fixed lymph nodes with hard consistency. And these are going to be non-inflammatory lymph nodes. Uh, so they're going to be painless or not tender to palpation. Now, you take some blood and on the blood smear, you don't see any abnormal cells. And so you know that despite the fact that this patient has non-tender lymphadenopathy, they do not have a leukemia. Otherwise, you would see cells in the peripheral blood. So you're not going to do a bone marrow. Instead, you're going to get a chest x-ray and it's going to show a left mediastinal enlargement. So Hodgkin's is definitely in the game when you see mediastinal masses as well as thymomas. A cervical lymph node gets taken out and you look at the histology, you see fibrotic bands dividing the tissue into cellular nodules, which consisted of neutrophils, eosinophils, macrophages, lymphocytes, and get this, large cells with two nuclear lobes and a nuclear cytoplasm. So the final diagnosis is classic Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular sclerosis subtype, stage 4a. So Hodgkin, as you can tell, pretty easy diagnosis. They have to give you in the question stem the answer to make the diagnosis. So what that means is because Hodgkin lymphoma is defined by the presence of Reed Sternberg cells, they have to either tell you or show you a picture of Reed Sternberg cells. Let me say that again. They have to tell you that there's Reed Sternberg cells in the stem for you to make the diagnosis of Hodgkin. So they're giving the answer away. Now, after they give you the Reed Sternberg cells, they're going to go one of three routes. They're going to ask you about Epstein-Barr. They're going to ask you about the subtype of Hodgkin lymphoma, nodular sclerosis that we just saw. It's the most common subtype. Or they'll ask you something about staging because that determines the prognosis for this cancer. Here's another practice question. 20-year-old man has a two-month history of night sweats, fevers, and weight loss. They're giving it away. Physical exam reveals enlarged lymph nodes in the patient's neck and both armpits. So you take a blood count, red cells and hemoglobin, normal, white cells, normal, platelets, normal. So it's not a leukemia, right? Then you look at the biopsy of the lymph node, and here's your histology. What's this in the middle of the screen? That's just two eyes looking right back at you. That's why it's called the owl eye cell. It's watching you like the feds are watching Gucci Mane. And notice how it is right in the middle of this slide, right? So on USMLE Conlex, if they show you a slide of some histology, whatever they want you to notice is going to be square in the middle of the slide, okay? They're not going to give you a lymph node biopsy and the Reed Sternberg cell is in lower right quadrant. You know, it's like, it's not going to happen. They're not going to give it to you and it's going to be right over on the frame of the picture. That's the word I'm looking for. It's not going to be on the frame. It's going to be in the center. You know, you take a photo of someone, you want to get their face in the middle of the picture, okay? So then what could they ask you after they give you this histology? Well, they could say, what's the diagnosis? To which you say Hodgkin lymphoma. Because if you see a Reed Sternberg cell, that's the rule in criteria for Hodgkin. Another patient, similar presentation, 34-year-old woman has an unexplained weight loss, sweating, chest pain, cough, and dyspnea. So of course you take a chest x-ray because TB and lymphoma are both in your differential. And you see a mediastinal mass, so you biopsy it. And 
there's a mononucleate and binucleate cell infiltrate. So a lot of normal inflammatory cells and then some mutated binucleate tumor cells. Which of the following types of microorganism is most commonly associated with this patient's condition? The answer being double-stranded DNA virus. That's your Epstein-Barr virus question. And remember, it's linear and enveloped, and it likes to attach to the CD21 receptor of B cells. It infects B cells. Okay, uh, so here's another question asking you, uh, what receptor basically does it attach to CD21 on B cells? They could also ask you what other cancer is it associated with? Remember Burkitt's lymphoma, uh, the endemic form particularly that presents as a mandibular mass. And then they could also ask you about nasopharyngeal carcinoma uh, in a person of Asian origin. So that's the presentation. It's classic, it's common. You're gonna recognize Hodgkin when you see it. Here's a gross lymph node biopsy, pretty cool stuff to look at. These are very, very swollen up. And here is a slide detailing different cells that you will see in Hodgkin lymphoma. Now, the Reed-Sternberg cell is binucleate, but sometimes you see Hodgkin cells, which are essentially the same thing as reed sternberg cells, but you can only see one nucleus inside them instead of two nuclei. And then we've got lacunar cells, which tell you that you're dealing with a particular subtype of Hodgkin's. And so to further look at these cells, uh, let's go back to the SDL and give it a, at least a glance, you know. So Hodgkin's versus non-Hodgkin's divide by the Reed Sternberg cell. It's 10% of all lymphomas. There's a bimodal age distribution. You will get an Epstein Barr virus question, and Epstein Barr plays a causal role in the development of this cancer. Now, when you're looking at the histology of the Reed Sternberg cell, understand that you are always going to see many, many other uh, leukocytes, white cells around the Reed Sternberg cells. And so there's lymphocytes. There could be eosinophils here, or some basophils too. Uh, it could be a lot of neutrophils in the area. And so you're going to see other white cells around this because it's in a lymph node. What's in a lymph node? White cells. Okay, so that explains the histology. Now, these Reed Sternberg cells, again, are going to be CD15 positive and 30 positive. That's important. So there are two subdivisions of Hodgkin's, and then there are subtypes of classic Hodgkin's. Um, so there's classic Hodgkin's and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's. Now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about nodular lymphocyte predominant because there is very little that you need to know about that. What you need to know about nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma is that it is not positive for CD15 or CD30. Instead, it's positive for CD20. And you see these cells called popcorn cells or LP cells in the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. And so LP cell standing for lymphocyte predominant. Here's an example of a popcorn cell. Uh, here's a little bit better example here. You can tell when we zoom in that this thing kind of has uh, some, some fluffiness to it, you know, as if it were popcorn or cauliflower or a head of broccoli. And uh, so, something similar here in the center of this photo, you know, there's a, there's a poofiness to this cell, if I could use that word. So you can see it also phrased as an irregularly contoured or folded nucleus. A lot of different ways they can tell you there's a popcorn cell uh, in the middle of histology. So that is gonna be your nodular lymphocytic rich Hodgkin's or lymphocyte predominant. And then let's talk about classic Hodgkin's. It's a lymphadenopathy that starts off in the neck and then is gonna spread elsewhere in the body in a predictable manner. So it likes to go to the axilla and then it likes to go down, down, down. And it'll eventually cross over the diaphragm and keep invading downwards uh, or inferiorly. And so we're gonna stage this tumor based on how many different lymph nodes it has invaded and is it above and below the diaphragm or only above the diaphragm because it usually always starts out above. Now you can get a Hodgkin's lymphoma in your 
spleen or liver. Those are very, very uncommon and questions that I've seen do not like to give you that sort of off the wall presentation uh, on what should be such a classic diagnosis on an exam. You can confuse it with a thymoma and you might see a superior vena cable syndrome in which blood backs up into the upper extremities and into the jugular veins because of compression of the SBC. We do count the spleen and the thymus as nodal organs in Hodgkin lymphoma. So if Hodgkin starts in the spleen, that's a nodal equivalent. We don't call that extra nodal. And that's important because when we're staging Hodgkin's, if there is an extra nodal lymph node involved or extra nodal organ rather, that automatically goes to a stage four. So because there are so many uh, white cells to be found in the spleen and the thymus, we don't count those as extra nodal. They're basically large lymph nodes themselves. Here is a diagram, good diagram detailing the spread of Hodgkin's. Again, it likes to start in the neck and then go to the mediastinum and or to the axilla, and then it'll eventually become bilateral. And then after that, it's gonna go below the diaphragm at some point. And that's when our staging is going to jump from a two to a three, when both sides of the diaphragm are involved, okay. So pretty easy to understand the staging. Um, what do you see on lab studies? Well, eosinophilia in a fraction of patients, that's the most, uh, characteristic or special thing, I suppose, from this SDL. So they could ask you, what would you see on a blood smear? Uh, they could also give you a, a scenario in which the patient has tumor lysis syndrome in which you've got a hyperkalemia and a hyperphosphatemia and resultantly a hypocalcemia. And that's due to tumor cell death. And what's going on there is that a bunch of cells are dying at once. So the patient has ion imbalances because those are intracellular ions, but then the patient will also have a gout due to the release of a bunch of purine nucleotides into the blood. So you need to give that patient allopurinol. You can also see very rarely a perineoplastic syndrome with a Hodgkin lymphoma. They do like to put vitamin D into the bloodstream. It's calcitriol. So that can lead to a hypercalcemia on that front. Now, what imaging do we use to detect Hodgkin lymphoma? This is more of a clinical medicine type of question, a step two type of thing. We like to use CT to diagnose it, although you can catch it on x-ray too. And then in order to stage the cancer, we like to use FDG, PET, fluorodeoxyglucose positron emission tomography imaging. So that's a good one right there to make a note of in first aid possibly. Hodgkin has a predictable spread, again, neck to mediastinum, to axilla, to below the diaphragm, to organs. So stage one, one node involved. Stage two, two or more nodes involved. Stage three, cross the diaphragm. Stage four, extranodal organ involved. Easy. So again, the reason why this matters is so that you can tell a patient, hey, this is a stage blank Hodgkin lymphoma. This is the pretty good as far as lymphomas go. We have a lot of good uh, techniques that we can use to treat this, you know, and uh, you're going to be just fine. And in fact, even for stage four, five-year survival is way above 50%. So here's the Reed Sternberg cell. I know we took a detour from the histology, getting back to that. And the Hodgkin cell is the Reed Sternberg, but mononuclear. Then there's lacunar cells. And this is pretty important because lacunar cells let you know you are looking at the nodular sclerosis subtype of Hodgkin lymphoma, which is the most common subtype. And guess what? It has nodular sclerosis on histology. It's a big node and it's tough to cut into. So let's look at lacunar cells quickly. These lacunar cells have uh, what the SDL calls spider web like extensions in them. Essentially, when you zoom in, there's my mouse, zoom in on the cell, you can tell here's the outer boundaries of the cytoplasm or the cell membrane. Here's the nucleus in the middle. And so I'll use a different color and we can trace these extensions that are going from the nucleus to the outside of the cell. Same thing over here, you can tell that there are sort of silk-like, thread-like strands holding the nucleus, anchoring it to the cytoplasm. So those are lacunar cells. And again, they let you know the patient has a Hodgkin of the nodular sclerosing subtype. 
LP sells popcorn sells. We took a look at that. So now let's talk about the four different subtypes of classic Hodgkin lymphoma. Friends, this could not be any easier. All four of these subtypes are named for exactly what they look like on histology. So it would be really tough to ask you a difficult question on this is what I'm saying. They have to literally tell you or show you what the subtype is. So nodular sclerosis, okay, they're gonna tell you that there is some sclerosis inside a nodule. Gee, that's tough, right? So this is gonna be typically in a, in a woman in her 20s or 30s, and again, this is the one that likes to present as a mediastinal mass. 80% of these are in the mediastinum. So then we have a mixed cellularity subtype. What that means is that there's a mixed inflammatory cell infiltrate. You do not have sclerosis. It is not nodular. So you know you are not looking at nodular sclerosis. This mixed cellularity subtype is seen at the age extremes. So if a patient has Hodgkin and they're under 10 or say over 60, then it's most likely that mixed cellularity subtype. And then we have two more self-evident subtypes. One is lymphocyte rich and the other is lymphocyte depleted or lymphocyte poor. And so again, they tell you in the name of the subtype exactly what you see on histology. One of them you see a lot of lymphocytes, the other one you don't. So you would wanna know prognosis for these last two subtypes. Uh, how I'm gonna remember it is that would you rather be rich or poor? Most men having been both would prefer to be rich, right? So the lymphocyte rich, subtype, that's the prognosis that's better. That's the one that you want. You would rather have the rich subtype than the lymphocyte poor subtype, which is going to be associated with a way worse, more aggressive prognosis. We talked about nodular lymphocyte predominant. The big detail is that it's CD20 positive, CD15 negative, CD30 negative. You will still see Reed Sternberg cells in this, and you will also see LP cells. And I reckon that's about all I got for Hodgkin lymphoma. Not a whole lot here. Repeat your EBV, rep it, rep it, rep it. And so you know Epstein-Barr virus very intimately. Thank you very much.